Hello and welcome back to Holt Hanley Weather. Today we're going to be talking about Winter Storm Nash and you're going to want to watch till the end of the video because we're going to be taking an in-depth look as to why this storm is forming and the reasons behind it are actually pretty weird. They're not what you'd expect. But first we're going to take a look at the rates and timing of this storm as it moves through North Carolina and Virginia. So this is a little snapshot of when the bullseye is going to hit. This is going to be Thursday at about 7 p.m. The exact timing of that is still in question because really a lot of things have to come together all at once for the storm to really work, but we'll take a good look at that throughout this video. So right now, you see there's some rain working its way through the south, Alabama, Georgia, and then that low starts to move in, and by Thursday at 7 a.m., western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee are both starting to get a little little dusting of snowfall. By Thursday at 1 p.m., that snow really starts to build into the area. Western North Carolina, you're now getting maybe 0.2 inches per hour, and then the snow is working its way up into Virginia and West Virginia as well. Well, right here is where the bullseye of the storm hits. This is Thursday at 7 p.m. North Carolina, you're getting pretty decent rates on this one, maybe 0.2 inches per hour in some places, and a wintry mix throughout kind of the southern portions of the state into South Carolina. And we'll take a look at the totals right here in a minute, but it's weird because the totals are actually higher on the coast, and that's because they're still getting a little bit of snow towards late Thursday night at about, about 1 in the morning as that low moves off into the Atlantic. So let's take a quick look at the totals expected with this storm. In western parts of North Carolina, it's going to be more in the 1 to 3 inch range. And Raleigh, you're going to be getting probably, probably around 3 inches, which is your typical yearly average. So you could be getting a year's worth of snow in about a matter of hours. And then the weird part about this storm is that the majority of the snowfall is actually happening on the coast. What is typical with snowstorms is the majority of it either happens because of lake effect or in higher elevation places further inland. Further inland, higher elevation, typically colder, and the coast is typically moderated by that warm Gulf Stream bringing all that warm air in. But what's weird about this storm is there's three to five inches along the coast, which is pretty much above their yearly average. So we're gonna take a look at what, what are the reasons behind that? Because it is pretty weird. The first culprit would be cold air. That's typically what causes big snowstorms, especially this far south. It's if a huge pocket of cold Arctic air has worked its way down. And as you can see, there is a nice pocket of cold Arctic air over the Midwest. So let's take a look and see if that moves down, maybe that's the culprit. Doesn't look like it. This is when the bulk of the storm is hitting and you see North and South Carolina, they're still in that yellows and greens. That says that they're around 35 to 40 degrees. So right there, you see Midwest is looking really cold. That's gonna be below zero, maybe even negative 15 in some places. But that cold air really doesn't push that far south. In fact, this is when the bulk of the storm is hitting, Thursday at 7 p.m. That's the key number you want to think about here. And you see, basically all of North Carolina is it's looking pretty warm. We got 34 degrees, 35 degrees. And an interesting thing is that 35 degrees, right where the bulk of the snowfall is hitting. And I know what you're thinking, 35 degrees is above zero. I mean, it's above freezing. So how could they be getting any snow? And the reason for that has to do with, think about the atmosphere. At the surface, it might be 35 degrees, but if you go up maybe 50, 100 meters, it's gonna be a lot colder, much colder as you go up the troposphere. So as long as that snow doesn't melt before it hits the ground, think it's snow when it's 100 meters up because it is below freezing up there, so it can fall. And as long as it doesn't melt, it can actually accumulate on the ground see some school closures throughout North Carolina for that exact reason. They're going to be getting maybe five inches of snow. Northeast, you might be thinking, oh, that's nothing. But 
For North Carolina, that's, that's a significant snowstorm right there. So it's not the cold temperatures causing this one. Let's identify what it really is. And it comes down to dry air. I know that's weird. Dry air causing a snowstorm? That doesn't seem like it makes any sense. But I'll explain it in one second. So off in parts of like Kentucky and even further west, we have this big high pressure system that is bringing that cold air down through the Midwest. Well, you think about the clockwise flow around a high pressure system, that's bringing air down like this. That's what's bringing this cold air down right here. You see, or hopefully you can see the wind that's coming down. The streamlines are moving south. And then there's also a low off of, off of South Carolina. It's pretty far off. So the low isn't causing the storm, but it is causing more winds to push south. You see actually pretty strong winds coming around this low. And you'll notice that the cold air is north of North Carolina. But what these winds are going to do is this cold air is extremely dry. So these winds are going to pull this dry air into North Carolina. Now, something pretty cool is going to happen. Precip is originally going to fall, let's say, as rain. As it falls through that dry air that the winds are bringing in, the precip is actually going to evaporate. The little water droplets are going to turn back into vapor. And when, when that happens, think about when you get out of a shower. You're really cold because the water is evaporating off your skin and that releases latent heat. Hopefully I'm not getting too sciencey here, but just think about a shower. When you get out, you get cold. Well, that's what the atmosphere is going to be doing because those droplets evaporate in the dry air and it cools the atmosphere. Because it cools it, now higher up it's a, like way below freezing and then when further rain falls, it's going to turn into snow. It's pretty, pretty cool to actually think about. The dry air is causing evaporation, which cools the atmosphere, which causes snow. There is one other feature that is driving the storm, and it has to do with the jet stream. Now, I'm not going to get too in-depth here. If you want a good look at what vorticity is, I've made a video explaining vorticity in the past. Basically, you have to know that vorticity is just the curl of winds, how much winds are turning. And when you get positive vorticity, that means it's turning like a cyclone or a hurricane. So it makes sense that positive vorticity is going to cause a storm. And in fact, it causes storm development. And something interesting about jet streams is when you have a really strong portion of the jet stream, like you're seeing right here, on this section, it's the lower exit region of the jet stream, you get a strong positive vorticity advection working right there. Now, what is that? How can I translate that? It is a lot of storm development moving into an area at the lower exit region of a jet stream. And you'll notice, this is right when we're getting all that snowfall, it is directly above North Carolina. So we get the dry air that's causing the atmosphere to cool down, and then we have this jet stream causing storm development. So the storm development and the freezing air work together to create snow for North Carolina. It's, it's pretty weird. Hopefully I haven't gotten too sciencey in this video, but you know, it's, it's just a weird storm. So I had to dive in and figure out why it was happening. Another big story going on right now is the flooding in the South Pearl river basin in Mississippi, basically going up the, the center of the state, extreme flooding, state of emergency, thousands of homes have been flooded. And unfortunately right now you see they're getting more rain actually throughout Thursday, they're going to be getting an over, they're going to be getting over an inch of rain, and that's not what they need. The soils are already saturated. They can't take any more water. And as you see, they're getting some heavy rates, 0.5 inches per hour. That's, that's not too good. Let's see how long it lasts. Throughout Thursday, 
By Thursday at 7 p.m., it's gone. That low has moved up to hit North Carolina with some snow, and the rain has moved off into Georgia. So really the bulk of this rainfall is hitting right now, Thursday morning. And then by Friday morning, you're basically in the clear through Saturday and hopefully Sunday as well. So that's pretty necessary so you can start working on some of that recovery. Another big story is that cold air moving through the Midwest right now. And look at some of those temperatures, negative 12, negative 18, negative 10 in parts of Wisconsin. Man, that, that is cold. And another big thing about that is, remember how heavy and how fast some of those winds looked? That's gonna create some wind chill. So that negative 18, that's gonna feel more like a negative 40. So cold in the Midwest, rain in the South, snow in parts of North Carolina. Let's take one last look at that total three to five inches along the coast. So this is gonna be a pretty awesome storm for you guys. I hope you have a nice day. Be careful driving and check back later for more forecast videos. And thanks for watching.